I do remember that the first poems that I wrote deliberately, I felt, um, I felt like I'd found a home for myself. There was, there's a home that I'd been needing and I found it. And I think, um, I don't know about for other poets, but I think for me it's been a, a, a journey of happy chances and coincidences. So um, I keep trying to give it up and I keep, because it's not that straightforward a life really. And, it, and it's a hard life for many folk to relate to. Every time I've made a decision that I'm going to look for another way of life, um, because I am more or less full time doing this. I mean, different jobs here and there as part of it. Um, something dramatic always happens to hold me to it. It's usually it's usually practical, and it's rarely things that I sort out. So it it holds me to it whether I want to be held to it or not. And very often I would be, I think, much happier to be um, working in a school, or um, or in the lab or or whatever. And, and yet it won't quite shake you. And it, it's not even that you've decided to give it up and a poem comes to you. It's not even that. It's just that circumstances conspire to keep you on that path, um, which is frustrating and satisfying. And obviously there's a lot of freedom with living like this, and that's very hard to lose. It's almost like a life has a momentum of its own and if you're willing to just let it happen to you, then you find yourself more or less in the right place and not needing to question whether you're in the right place too much either, which I think a lot of people find hard to imagine. I get asked a lot if I'm here forever, um, if Shetland is going to be home forever. Um, and I don't think you can, I don't think you can say really. But I don't worry about it either. I don't have that, um, should I be living somewhere else, kind of feeling very much. Well, I suppose there's, there's two things. There's trying to write and there's poetry coming to you. And I'm still in two minds as to whether you need both of those. I need to be writing a certain amount to be ready for if one of those poems does come out of the blue. I need to be writing a certain amount before I can feel that I wouldn't lose it. I write poetry. I write it. I don't compose it in my head, but I, I edit it speaking out, speaking it out loud over and over and over again. And that helps me find the rhythmic current through the poem. And if I don't do that enough, then I end up with something quite cluttered and quite often quite unsayable, but feels more like a piece of writing. But having said that, of course, the best writing probably communicates like speech anyways. The Plinky Boat. Something near to true night darkness. The children are playing the Plinky Boat, a xylophone made from a reclaimed yule. Built for flexibility in a coarse sea, you can tell it fledged with ease, just blushed from boat to instrument transpiring streams of these hoarse night notes. For its copper pipes are cut to breadth exactly, so the boat's beam is its sotto voce, and two rills of rising pitch run into the harmonic of each honey spot where the boards of gunnels and stem flow together. I don't know what it is about this place that things metaflower so readily into their present selves. The instruments a boat, the notes unresonant, and scales of thin light swarm over the pipes from the boys' head torches. Perhaps we heard seals broaching in the harbour as they answered the girls' hand-clapping game. I doubt they moaned in a haunted wise. Here was everything, words lost as I'm trying to say their echo that yodel into past and future. The poem wouldn't exist, but we couldn't stay. I mostly wrote my last book, this was last summer, and 
I felt very strongly that I needed to carve out a bit of a sabbatical for myself in order to do that because I wanted to go as deeply as I could into the natural life around where I live here. Um, and I thought that might take some time. <laughs> and also I just needed some privacy for that or, or something like that. I wanted to be totally involved in, in the tiny life and the big life. So I cleared myself a little bit of space in the summer um, just to be thinking about being a writer again and to get some time to read for myself again and, um, and to write. And I spent most of it just over the, the back wall there, um, just on the cliffs and in a, in a sort of a hidden valley that you can't see any houses from. And um, I knew there were particular organisms that I wanted to get closer to and I still want to get closer to, like puffballs. Um, and bivalves, I like bivalves a lot. So there's a, an absorption and your, your perception of place and time changes. Everything's very intense. There's a kind of a greed behind it and excitement and tiny things in rock pools or whatever become um, bigger and, and kind of swallow you up and you feel yourself shrinking. And, um, and, and it's almost like you literally forget yourself. I think the closest thing to my definition of, definition of happiness is being able to forget yourself. Part of what makes a poem a poem is that you don't have complete control over it and that you, um, you scribe it. At best, you, you hardly have a hand in it at all. So there are a few that came like that and those are, those are still the ones that I want to read and sometimes I wish that I would just hold on and wait for a collection full of poems like that. But it would take years and years and years. <laughs>